Hey, welcome to Almanmation. In this video, I will be exploring two projects where I have done rays or some kind of glowing in one project, three different ways. And another project will be particles, um, four different ways of particles, normally how we would animate them. So let's start. These are really practical uh, use cases. So please follow and see. But unfortunately, I'm not going to do it again from scratch. I will um, do that in the course of VFX. So I will post a link to that course in the description so you can pre-register to be the first one to be notified. The first glow consists by the small circles. Each of them have their colors animated. And as you can see, the alpha is split. So I can control the alpha separately. This is the alpha. You can notice that it has a different timing than the color itself. So what happens is alpha is fading in and fading out slowly while the color changes rapidly. That's basically it. Everything else is just um, offset and that's it. Let's uh, move to this one, which will be the rays. Here we have just images. Sometimes client give you the texture and says, I need exactly this to be animated. So we need to use the texture and not split it or use our version. So in this case, I want to comment when you have a race or some kind of smokes that move slowly, do not use sequences. Um, they won't be as smooth as if you use uh, textures and combine them and compose them in a beautiful, uh, richer VFX. So that's the main um, key point that you need to understand before picking any PNG sequence that needs to be moving slowly then it doesn't need to be a PNG sequence. When you need to choose PNG sequence is mostly when it is a quick impact like explosion or rich splash and uh, ripples on the water. Anything that is quick so it can be small and short, few frames. Sometimes you can use very short loops to combine very big and beautiful big sequences. Other than that, almost always use images and combine richer effects. When you use images, you can combine them to get more richer effects like layered. One can have a um, different blending mode then the other can have different color. So general advice would be whenever you work with VFX and uh, single images, build one component, be happy with that and then duplicate and uh, create variations of that by flipping it, changing the scale, changing the color and blending mode and all that. I will talk about all that in the course. So make sure you uh, pre-register. So what we have here, we have just the texture. It has a binding, just a bone inside. This is the structure of it. Main bone, then the slot that is inside and another bone that is the center. So the center bone is actually controlling this blue section and it fades out uh, while it goes uh, to the edges. Let me demonstrate that by just moving the center bone. See, see, I can even rotate that. So try all your options with that image and you get very rich result. And I have three versions of rays. All are just duplicates. Here are they. One is brighter, one is orange, one is transparent, smaller. So sometimes I might even change the texture. As you can see here, one is using different texture actually than the other. Why not if I have that? But if I use the same texture, it would really uh, not be that different. So another important thing here is you could actually spin it 360 degrees, but that would force you to create a very uh, long timeline. So it spins slowly. What I do instead, I just uh, overlap them. If you look at my face, my hands here, overlap them and kind of vibrate or 
oscillate them, some, something like this, so to create a little bit uh, illusion that they are just randomly floating there in the air. Th this is much, much easier to achieve. That's why you can also do the full cycle of rotation and then overlap. The last one consists of single images. All these arrays that you can see rays, they are just basically this image. In edit mode, I would just cut them in the middle, delete the uh, half, and then I will just stretch this part and that become a array. We have three containers. Each consists again, three, three of them, and they have a single. So I would animate one ray, make it uh, fade in and fade out slowly. Once I am happy with that, I would duplicate it and give just variety to that. Once I'm happy with a single group, I would just duplicate and overlap them. That's that simple as it can be. Then I just add a glow behind so it kind of blends in nicely with the icon in this case. Okay, let's check the other project. So first one is uh, using groups. I would put the particles inside the groups and then rotate the group, share it, scale it and move it, whatever I can do with that group. So it will move particles randomly. The important thing is that all the particles here have a separate inherent uh, scale turned off so when I scale the group the particles will not actually scale okay then we could have several groups that can overlap and this is basically what you see here I'm going to cover the layers technique which is a um, single component here that has a bone and the particle just flying out Recently, I made another tutorial with fire. I built it exactly the same way, but with different textures. So it, it creates a fire and much faster uh, movements. So this technique is very, very flexible and you can use basically for um, a lot of stuff. So once you build one component, which will be this one, where this particle is moving along that bone and fading out, once you are happy with that, you can duplicate it and create variations by flipping, changing the size of the bone, animating the bone, rotating, and maybe even moving that bone, whatever works for you, whatever you want to do to get more variety. The particles have um, inheritance scale turned off here. So when I scale it, it, it does not scale, but instead just uh, affect uh, the trajectory of the flying the path and then we just get this one feel free to go and scale the particles manually to give variety in the setup pose as you can see i have here in the group and same would be here they are already scaled in the setup pose what's happening here why do they like um, wobble around let's check that I'm using the latest technique, which will be the um, slider constraint here. I have two constraints, two slider constraint. One would be particles, the other would be stars. So let's talk about particles for now. I'm activating particle animation and you can see we have eight frames and particles just wobbling around and doing some glowing, as, as you can see here, opacity change. So I'm actually using this animation in the group animation. Let's scroll down and you will see a timeline for the slider, which means that we have, we have two keys. First key will tell us that animation should be at a zero frame. We are talking about particle animation but we are in the group animation right now. So we are playing particle animation inside group animation. But here we have more control. We can actually play it as many times as we want, as, as fast as we want. Just make sure the last frame is 800. Particle animation has eight frames, so it will repeat 100 times. To repeat, we need to mark it as a loop. If we uh, change the scale of these particles in the group, 
and play the particle animation over, it will override and the scale will not affect if we don't have additive enabled. I'm using the same particle animation in the layers group. And that's why they uh, again wobble around with some kind of alpha flickering. You can see the timeline here for particles uh, slider, which starts at zero frame here. And at the last frame, we will have 200. Just make sure that this number is dividable by, by the number of the frames the, that slider animation has. We had eight frames there. So 200 can be divided by eight without any remainders. Otherwise, the, the animation will just snap. So it, it will end abruptly and jump back from the zero frame because we have a loop. Um, another technique is calling single it's when you animate the textures they are just growing up um, they would move with a different speed you can see two different textures but they move with a different speed so we can kind of get uh, a little bit of variation and overlapping parallax effect this is very important otherwise it will just look like a big texture is going up so I still use the slider, but this time I am um, playing the stars animation here. So let's check what we have in the stars. Wait, just the texture wobbling around, scaling, sharing, or whatever it is doing, just creating random noise. That's great. So in the single animation, we are actually adding up upwards movement. So we get, give them upwards movement, we give a little bit uh, alpha opacity and with that all we combine it with the stars animation to get some kind of random uh, animation. Yeah, basically that. Uh, let me know if this was helpful for you. Thanks a lot. I really want to post more videos, but I'm working on the course now. Sorry for that and hope I will release it very soon. Thank you guys. Bye.